everybody and welcome to a very special board game review and gameplay demo. Why is today special? Because it is about a game style that I have never reviewed before. This is a very, very unique type of game that you would more than likely call a party game. However, it is the most tame of the party games in my opinion. It is Wits and Wagers. Yes. This is my absolute most favorite party style game, right? Now, obviously there are a lot of different games that can accommodate a lot of people. I have a video about it, just saying, just go watch it. But this game itself is absolutely incredible. I love this game. I love the idea that it doesn't rely on you directly knowing anything. You really do not have to know the answer to any of the questions it asks you. You don't need to be able to draw well. You don't need to be able to act. You don't need to be able to do any of that stuff. You don't need to do stupid stuff like wear a pot on your head while you try to knock over a piece on the table or something weird like that. Terrible, terrible gameplay mechanics. This game, on the other hand, the way it works is very, very simple. You have a minimum of four players, which is, you know, not great, I might add. Uh, recommended with about six, six or more. Uh, you can play either as uh, individual players or as teams. Really doesn't matter. I find that teams are a lot more fun. The idea is that you have a question. The answer to the question is always a number. It's a number of some sort. You don't know what. I don't know what. Right? But the answer will always be a number and uh, the idea is that you write it down on, you know, you get like a, a little thing and you write it down with a dry erase marker and then you say, okay, well, let's uh, line up the guesses. And then it's just like the price is right. Whoever gets closest without going over wins, right? Before it happens though, everybody gets to bet, hence the wagers. The wits is, do you actually know the answer? The wagers is, do you think somebody else might know the answer? And that is really the key to me really enjoying this game. I absolutely adore it for the fact that you don't need to be some super great trivia genius to know to play this game and have a good time. All that you need is you need to have a buddy that you know knows all that stuff, and then you always bet on their answer. Easy peasy, right? So the idea is that the teams or individuals, however you're playing, place bets on what they're going to do depending on the location. Uh, the payouts are different, but I'll obviously get into that when I talk about the demo itself. Um, and then you reveal what the answer is. Whoever got it closest without going over, that is the winner. And whoever bet on it gets a payout. Whoever wrote out the answer, uh, if it was multiple people or teams, then everybody on that team or that individual gets bonuses. Very exciting, very simple game, very obviously extremely quick to learn. That I literally just explained the entirety of the game. The nuance really comes into how much you're going to bet because you can increase your bets later on. I mean, there's really not a whole lot else to it. And that's really the beauty of it. This is a great example of what a party game should be. It's a game that gets people up interacting with one another, talking back and forth, trying to figure stuff out, but in a very, very comparatively simple context. Even compared to something like Resistance, which is a really great game for a lot of people, it's something that a lot of people can get confused by very, very quickly. Something like this, especially if you're playing as teams, you know who's on your team, you know what the question is, you can guess approximately what the answer is, and then you can say, oh, well, that one makes more sense, let's bet on that one. It's so simple. It's absolutely amazing. It's a great game. On top of that, you can play it like uh, something like Werewolf, where you have somebody who's a dedicated moderator, uh, and they'll like uh, collect up all of the uh, tokens and information and stuff like that, so you don't have to worry about swapping out the banker, as it's called. You know, things of that nature, just to make things even more smooth. It's absolutely a wonderful, wonderful game. Uh, but with, without further ado, we'll just go right on ahead and talk about what this game is similar to. As far as similarities, there aren't really a whole lot of things with Wits and Wagers. The most obvious things are trivia games. You know, you've got uh, Trivial Pursuit being the most obvious one. I've talked about the Big Bang Theory, a trivia game, which is one that I have. You could argue stuff like Seen It, all of those kinds of things. Because that's really what this game comes down to. It comes down to, do you know the answer? Again, you don't have to know the answer, but if you do, then you should write it down because then you know, you know, stuff like that. Um, so that's really the most obvious thing, but the twist is obviously with the wagers. That's the whole point of the game. And that's why this is much better than something like Trivial Pursuit because you don't have to know what, I don't know, the capital of Botswana is or something. I don't have a clue. 
I mean, obviously that wouldn't be a question because it doesn't, it's not a number, but it doesn't matter. I, I don't know. What's the, what's the deepest core of ice that was drilled out of the Antarctic or something like that? I don't have a clue. That might be a question in here. I don't know. But, you know, that's like the perfect example of a question. I don't know, but somebody else might. Somebody else might have something that makes more sense to me or make less sense to me. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. Um, but uh, you do have just a basic betting system. Now, again, the uh, the price is right is really the, the most similar thing because that's really what it's more based off than anything else, where it's closest without going above the actual answer. And I think there's an, a price is right home game. I imagine there is. There are more than like How can there not be, right? But either way, it's... The, that's really the, the thing with uh, party games like this, is if you're talking about hobby games, like the, the majority of my collection back here, then you really don't have a lot to compare it to because that's the whole point. It's not designed as a hobby game. It's not designed as something that's really heavily strategic that you need to sit and think about for like three or four minutes. You know, it's, it, that's just not how it works. Um, but if you've, if you've played any sort of trivia game and then, you know, just think of, in, with the price is right, instead of only guessing on the price of something, you're guessing as to if somebody is telling you the price and you're saying which uh, one you think is correct, which is actually several of their, their games, as you're trying to figure out if uh, a price is correct or not. You know, just, and that's, that's really what it is. That's all that you're doing. This is, this is nothing else. I don't know why this section of the video is being so long. I'm just going to go start demonstrating the game so that you guys can see how to play. All right, everybody, we are here and we are set up to play Wits and Wagers. Like I said, it's a very, very simple setup. Each individual or team gets a colored board uh, of one of seven colors. They get the two chips that match the color of their board. And then they also get a dry erase marker, all of which comes with the, um, with the game. We've got this game board. I know that you can't see it too, too well on my green background here, but even so you can see it well enough. So you see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven spaces here that go from five to one to two to one and then two to one back up to five to one just depending on how everything goes if you can't read this this says smaller guesses go this direction and larger goes that direction as I mentioned this is basically the price is right whoever is the closest without going above the answer wins and you can see here at the very uh, far left end smaller than the smallest guess so whoever had the smallest guess if you say no nah, that's still not low enough you can bet there and it pays six to one All right to start off these wager chips are each worth one and gradually you get paid out more and more and more so you start earning more and more money and this is the money right we've got red is equal to one chip uh, the blue is equal to five and the green is equal to 25 so as the game progresses we'll be getting more and more of those this is played over the course of seven rounds regardless of how many people you're playing with and we've just got a big pile of questions in the box so you just draw one out ask the question people write down the answer place them down and we just go from there it's very very simple like I said okay so uh, for this demo I'm going to show you guys some of the uh, some of the the ways that uh, the game changes as you have different numbers of, of guesses uh, What happens to the individual cards that are correct all that kind of stuff? So I'm just gonna go over all the basics for the rules, but again very very quick very very easy our first question is in miles per hour. What is the fastest recorded speed for a fish a fish I don't have a clue. I don't study fish, but we're going to go ahead and guess. So the first thing we do is we flip over our timer. The time is running, people. All right, so I'm just going to use the same pen to guess everything. Now, the thing is that normally you would have, uh, hopefully at least, have teams talking about this and saying like, oh, the this, the that, the this, the that, what, 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 what's going on? I don't know. I don't know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Me, since I'm just filling out all four, first off, it's taking a lot less time, obviously, and second off, there's not a lot of discussion occurring because of it. All right, and that's, uh, that's time right there. So there we go, we're done. Now everybody places their cards over here. You would have uh, put these in face down effectively. All right, so the first thing we do is we put them in order. 
All right, so we got 60, 67, 75, and 80. Now, if you have an even number of unique numbers, that is to say uh, two teams did not uh, say the same thing, or if they did say the same thing, that is one unique number. I'll, I'll show you that in a little bit. Then the way you do it is you do not use this central one. You do not use the uh, two to one. So here we've got pays one to four with 60, 67, and then 75 and 80. Okay, now we flip the timer again and people place their bets. The way that you place your bets is you can either place two chips on a single answer or you can place one chip on each of two answers, right? Easy enough, yeah? So we flip it over. Yellow, they're going to go with themselves. And then they're also thinking like may maybe it's a little bit lower than 60. I don't know about fish. They smell really bad. They probably can't swim too well. All right, blue. Going with the, the 67 and the 60, sort of hedging the bets on them. And orange, they absolutely know that there is like some equivalent of like a cheetah on steroids in the ocean down there. And it seems that my timer has stopped working. Right? See, that? that's all that went down. So clearly, I, I did that at lightning speed. Right? Now, since the bets are placed, we flip the card over. And the answer is 68 miles per hour. The cosmetology. Cosmopolitan sailfish can swim 300 feet in three seconds. I do not wish to be chased by that, right? So that is 68 miles per hour, which means that the winning answer is 67 because it is the closest without going over, okay? So that means that yellow, because they had the card, automatically gets three chips for that, all right? Because their card was picked. And then both blue and yellow had a chip here, and it pays three to one. So that means that blue gets three, and yellow gets three for their bet. Okay? So yellow got a total of six chips from that because they be balling, right? Purple gets nothing, gets the chips back. Orange gets nothing, gets the chips back. And blue got something at least. Gets their chips back. Yellow didn't know what they were doing that second time. All right. So that's it. That's one round right there. And you see my timer stopped again. I think there might be like moisture in it or something. Right. Either way, that's that's it for the round. Like I said, all you do is seven of those. Okay, so I'm just going to do maybe one or two more just to show you some of uh, some of the changes that can happen as you're playing through this. Right. So we pick a question. And this question is, in what year did Leonardo da Vinci draw designs for the first modern parachute? I don't know. At some point? Let's see. The Renaissance, it was in like the mid and late 1400s. I know that. So here, here's what we'll do. We'll do this. We'll say... Uh, there you go, say. Mm -hmm. yeah. Erase your board, yellow. Jeez. Ruining everything. All right. So everybody's got their answer. I know I didn't really flip the timer, but again, it doesn't work very well anyway. All right, so we all put them down here. We've got 1450, 1460, and 1500. So both blue and purple said the same thing. They both said 1400. Now that means that we only have three unique answers. So now we use this middle portion. See how that works? The idea is that you have an odd number, so you use this. So there's an equal amount on either side, regardless. If you've got, if you've got an even number, then you want to still have an even number of unique guesses on either side. Okay? That's the way it works. Now, for the guessing. So we've got 1450, 1460, and 1500. I believe that 1500 is outright wrong. These two are the tough thing. I don't know if it was before 1450. And I know, I wrote all of these answers, so get off my back about it. All right? Come on, timer. Work with me. Okay, here's how the chips work. The chips work as additional wager chips, exactly what they might sound like. So what Blue's going to do is they're going to take their cardboard chip and two of the red chips that they just won and put it on 1460. So that's a total of three now. And then they'll do... Um, Actually, they're, they're going to go they're going to go all out on 1460. They think that they were wrong now. They rethought it. Purple is confident in themselves. Orange is confident in themselves. And yellow, 
Well, they know how to do. They know that they're right. I don't know why they're being so crazy, but that's just how they do. And see, my timer stopped again. Oh, well, we know that it was below time. The correct answer of when what year did Leonardo da Vinci draw designs for the first modern parachute is 1483. Ooh, bad luck, 1450. So that means that 1460 is the correct answer. So 1500 goes away. So that means that yellow lost all of the chips that they just won. Sad day. These guys won, however, so that means that these pay two to one. And blue bed, one, two, three, four, five. So they get 10. Woo! Money! And then orange will get four because they bid two. Two, three, four. There we go. And then orange will get another three because their card was the correct card. Just like that. Erase it. Eh, eh. Close enough. Erase it. And erase it. And then chips go back. All right? And that's pretty much it. So like I said, that's two rounds right there out of a total of seven that you would play through an entire game of Wits and Wagers. You can see it's pretty fast paced. Once you get teams going or even individuals, then you can still have a lot of table talk. It's a ton of fun. It really is a tremendously awesome game. It's, I mean, you can see the, uh, the bids. G oh, excuse me. The bids can get exceedingly high ridiculously quickly. It's just, it's an absolute blast. I highly recommend it. It's a ton of fun. And that's really all of the details that you need to know as far as how the game works. I'm, it, again, it's very, very simple. But you can see how it's really good to have some kind of a moderator who's handling the money, asking the questions, keeping track of the time, all that kind of stuff. It just makes it so much easier. Uh, but it is possible not to do that and just have the banker roll uh, rotate around which is what the game itself recommends but with that I hope that you enjoyed my little demo for wits and wagers and we're gonna go right on ahead and move into the pros and cons for this game well I hope that you enjoyed my little demonstration for wits and wagers as you can see it's a really really fun game and you can see very quickly how the interaction can start flying around and going across the table especially if you're in teams now to get to the pros and cons because we have to do pros and cons cons first is what I just said teams teams are by far the best way to play this game the problem is in order to play it with teams you need to have a lot of people uh, I mean, and we're, we're talking like at least 10 or 11 because then you can have like six teams of two. All right. Well, six, whatever, five teams of two. It, the, you know what I mean. Okay. The, the point is that the more people you have, the better this game gets. If you are not at, you know, a large party, whether it's like a family reunion a reception, um, you know, like an end of the year party for an office, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, it does, doesn't matter. Whatever context is appropriate. I don't know when, I, when to play this game. I don't do those things. I sit in here and make videos. What do you want from me? Right? But wherever you can play this, try to play it because there really aren't a lot of times that it's available. Okay? It's, it's just one of those. That's one of the biggest cons. Yes, you can play it with four people. No, it's not very fun. I do not recommend it, right? And um, and especially don't play as four people at the same time because then it's even more boring, right? But, you know, you can at least tell people how it goes. But either way, it's, it's still a, a really fun game uh, regardless. So uh, that's really the biggest con is just the number of people required to make certain that everybody is having a good time. Um, another major con is that you, you can have people who are turned off by the trivia aspect, even though it's really mitigated by the betting part. Uh, I've, I have run into that problem with this game where people are just like, like throw fits basically and just say, no, I can't play this because I don't understand any of the questions. It's like, well, you're missing the point of the game, but okay. Uh, so that's potentially a problem. That's hopefully less of a problem for you guys than it has been for me, which is weird. Oh well. But either way, that's that's the other really major con. As far as the pros, again, as far as party games are concerned, this is pretty much the the top notch that you're gonna find. Right? If you need a game that can play like 
an entire room of people, wits and wagers should be your go-to. It really, really should be. Now, we're not talking like a hundred people, okay? But you could play this with like 25 people. I mean, you could play it with 24, uh, 24, 25 people, like fairly easily. You could, you can basically play with up to, I believe it's seven teams total is the, the max, because that's how many uh, spots there are. See, I already forgot. But either way, you you can play with uh, up up to that many. So you know you're you're talking about reasonable sized team like four people. You know, twenty eight, thirty people, fa fairly easily and without too much ridiculousness. So not bad. So what is a con is also a pro. You need a lot of people, but you can have a lot of people, which is not something that a lot of games can say. Um, Another really great pro for this is that it's something that pretty much everybody would be familiar with. More than likely, people grew up watching Bob Barker on The Price is Right, and they're just like, hey, this is just like The Price is Right, and I'm just like, boom, now you got it. Now you know, and that's it, and now we can play because people understand that concept much, much e more easily. Like I said at the beginning of this video, that's one of the great things about some of these party games is the whole point of a party game is that it has to have a concept that people can grasp within about 10 or 20 seconds. If they can't do that, then boom, they're gonna be turned off just like that, and they're not gonna to wanna to play. They're not even gonna to wanna to try, because it's like, if I can't get it in that amount of time, why do I care, right? Especially if you're talking about non-gamers, which are the types of people you'd most likely be playing with, right? So it's a tremendous example of what a party game should be, both in the context of how the game functions, all the way to how many people it can accommodate, and just the, the, general, the general fun of the game itself. Again, going back to basic trivia games, if you're talking about especially Trivial Pursuit, if you don't know a question, then you don't know a question, and that's it. And you can go back and forth, waiting for that last pie piece, hoping for a question that you know the answer to. And it just takes forever. Ah, oh, back and forth, back, and that's it. And it gets so tedious so quickly. And uh, I mean, obviously Trivial Pursuit, not a party game, but in the context of question and answer, Trivial Pursuit is probably the most well known. But either way, I have ranted and rambled far, far too much for this game, which is ironic because I rambled more than it takes to actually play the game itself. Just go out and try it if you get a chance. Go out and buy it if you can. It's a fairly inexpensive game as well. But again, a ton of fun. Absolutely wonderful game. Wits and Wagers, as always, please put any and all feedback in the comments below. I love to hear what you guys think. Do you enjoy this game? Do you not enjoy this game? Do you like party games in general? Do you think that it's kind of a waste of space uh, for, uh, for your game shelf? Um, you know, what, what do you think? What do you guys think about it? I personally like it, obviously, so I would love to hear your guys' opinions. As always, thank you so very much for being here. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching my board game review and gameplay demo for Wits and Wagers. As I mentioned before, I know that this is the very first party game that I have ever done, and I'm really curious about what you guys think about that. Do you enjoy party games? Do you not enjoy them? Do you think it sort of brings down the hobby and all that kind of stuff? What do you think? Please, as always, leave any and all feedback in the comments below. I've also got the playlists linked up at the top of the page so that you can see some of my other latest work as well. And as always, if you like what you see, click on that big giant subscribe button Button so that you can see more of me in the future. You can also follow me on Twitter at Danny C Gaming Sci so that you can get notifications when I post new videos. Thank you very much again and I'll see you next time.